Chapter 5 of Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Now go to verse 13. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is, all you with sheets, help me here, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. May God's word be revealed in this reading. Amen. Please keep your Bibles open as we discuss this. Would you pray with me? Lord God, may your gospel come in power and in truth. May it enlighten us and may it transform us into the freedom of the Spirit. This we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Thursday we will celebrate the 237th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. When we told whom? the British, that what? We're done. I like that. We're done. You are no longer going to control us and tell us what to do and how to do it. They didn't receive that real well, as we would not either. And so we fought for our independence. Now we celebrate this freedom with picnics, outdoor eating, except for when it's 106. By the way, my son sent me a picture, he's in Las Vegas, of the temperature in Las Vegas at 4 o'clock, it was 118. But mom, it's not too bad, there's no humidity. I said 118 is hot, I don't care whether you have humidity or not. We celebrate it outside and we eat with our families, we gather together, and then at night we have what? Fireworks. And I began to think about that and realized that whenever freedom is discussed, there are fireworks. Not the kind that are in the sky, however. When I discuss my freedom, it tends to rub into your freedom, and conflict ensues. Power and control always cause conflict, as does freedom cause 
fireworks. And I think Paul and the Galatians would agree with this because that's what's going on in Galatia. They're trying to figure out what this freedom in Christ would look like and how it would play itself out. Now, when you and I think about freedom, we think about choices, right? We have choices. So I began to think about a typical day and the choices that we make, and there were too many to go through. So I picked one, the lovely time we go to the grocery store. First, we have to choose where to park. Then we go up and we have choices about which basket we're going to pick. We have a big basket, a little basket, a uh, basket for the kids, or, you know, zoom, 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 one of those powerful carts that you drive around. Then we go in, and I, I did this. I'm thinking of the store that I go in, and we go to the fruits. And we have to figure out, I just want some apples. Well, there's 14 different varieties of apples. Not only that, but there's also organic 14 varieties. So we, we try to make it simple, and we, we go to the bread aisle. Oh, for the days when there was white and wheat. You know? We have to choose that. I don't even want to go to the meat section. Too many choices. And if we go to the soup section, <laughs> it's even worse. Look at all the choices we make. So we finally get the, the basket filled with whatever it is. And one thing, think about the Coke aisle. Coca-Cola's. Now, you have a whole aisle of sodas, right? So you say, I want a Coke. Do you want a Diet Coke with caffeine or without? Do you want a Coke Zero? Do you want a regular Coke with caffeine or without? And whatever you decide, what size do you want? 8 ounce, 12 ounce, liter, 2 liters. And that's just the Cokes. And now Pepsi's got another one. And Dr. Pepper has a 10. And you think you're finally through with the decisions. Now, I, th I think men enjoy this more than women. I may be wrong, but my husband enjoys the grocery store much more than I do. I want to go in, I want to get out. He's not scared of it. He wants to read the labels, and he wants to find something new to eat, and, you know, I just want to get what I know I'm used to and leave. So I start to leave, and I go to check out, and I still have choices to make, don't I? Check, cash, credit, or debit or gift card. So we relate freedom, plastic or paper or cloth, to choices. We make hundreds of choices every day. And what we mean by choices is I'm in the driver's seat. I get to decide. But the problem with that kind of choice is that that kind of freedom can be used by evil against us or someone else? I want you to think back, those of you that remember this and were alive. Tiananmen Square. We were watching, out of our freedom, we were televising that. Out of our freedom and right to see it, we were televising that, but we weren't the only ones watching. The Chinese type, tapped into our signal, Chinese government, tapped into our signal and used it to identify those young people and imprison them. That is using one kind of freedom for evil. Paul gives us this real long list if you will look in your Bibles, I don't want to read it again. 
But first he says, if you bite and devour one another with your freedom, take heed that you are not consumed by one another because of your freedom. And then he gives us that long list. I am free, they said, to do anything I want, to be jealous, angry, selfish, whatever. Is that true? Is that what freedom really is? Is it the choice to hurt others regardless? Pam, is it the choice for someone to go out and drink and get drunk and then drive? Because it affects other people in an evil way, and you're a living proof of that. You see, sometimes our freedom can be used by evil to hurt others and maybe even to hurt us. But the freedom that Paul is talking about in the spirit is totally different. Freedom, the way we look at it, is choices, correct? You chose to get up this morning. You chose to get dressed. You chose to come here. But the freedom Paul is talking about is a freedom of transformation in the spirit. We are free in the spirit to be transformed, to bear fruit loving fruit and he lists the fruit of the spirit transformation changes us from selfish opinionated only focusing on ourselves choices to choices that are based on love and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and goodness and self-control But it's a transformation kind of freedom within the spirit. And I thought about that, and um, often at churches, AA groups meet, or groups like AA groups meet. And one of the things that you do in an AA group is you identify your higher power. And then you give your life over to this higher power. Now, if you ask anyone who is an alcoholic or an alcohol abuser what their choice would be, if it was just up to them, what is their choice? It is to drink. But when they give themselves over to that higher power, the transformation is not to drink. They rely on their higher power to help them make choices that are better for them and better for the world. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What is the first piece, joy of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit? Love. What's the last one? You think that's a coincidence? I don't think so. Starts with love, and we're not talking about feelings. We're talking about respect and honoring other people. It's not a feeling, it's a decision. I make a decision to love you in Christ, whether I like you, whether I want to do that or not. If I am transformed by the Spirit, that's what I do. And it ends by self-control, by me not abusing that love. Not abusing and doing just what I want without considering how that affects other people. That's one of the beautiful things if our parents do it close to being correct, they taught us gradually to make decisions by giving us little problems, larger problems, larger problems, and we learned to make decisions and didn't have to suffer such great consequences until we became an adult. But we learned how to make choices that did not hurt other people. That's the hardest lesson, I think, for for me. It was the hardest lesson for me to realize, and I think it was a hard lesson for my sons to realize, and that's that your decision as a child of someone affects your parents greatly, whether you are four or 64. You are still my child. And what you do and the choices you make still affect me 
and the choices I made affected my parents. You see, we're, we're interconnected here. We can't just say, I'm going to do whatever I want whenever I want because it's nobody else's business. It is everybody else's business. Part of freedom means knowing where yours stops and mine begins and respecting that. So the power that we get from the Spirit is not to, to make choices, it's to be transformed in the Spirit in our making choices. And hear this, please, and hear this as nicely as I know how to say it. It's not for us to just say, I've already made my decision and I'm should, sure God would say it's okay. You see, that's how we use God. I've already decided this, and I'm sure it's what God wants me to do. We just use God to affirm what we've already decided to do anyway. That's not what being transformed by the Spirit means. It means that we look more like Christ in our decisions, in our actions, in who we are, in what we do. Excuse me, but whatever's going on in the weather, it's driving me nuts. So what does this look like? What does this freedom in the Spirit look like? Well, gradually it moves us closer to Christ. It establishes a relationship because, as I've said many times before, we become like the people we hang with. My sons like to use that word, so I'm trying to use it more so they'll talk to me occasionally. We become more like who we hang with. If I'm hanging with Christ, I'm going to look better because Christ is going to rub off on me. So we get closer to Christ. It's called a relationship. It's called the most important relationship in your life. And then as we move closer to Christ, we take that into the world. And this is what Paul is talking about in his letter to the Galatians. He says... You need to take this into the world. You need to be slaves to one another, is the way he puts it. But what he's saying is, care about one another. When you make your decisions, think about how it's going to affect this person, that person. Think of what your comment is going to do to whoever you say it to. So we go from Christ to we go into the world and we love our neighbor, as he said, Paul quoted the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You see, we do it just like Christ did it. Do you think Christ really wanted to be nailed to a cross? If he'd had his choice, completely his choice as a human being, would he have choice to, chose to be spit on, to be whipped, to have a crown with thorns stuck on his head, to be humiliated as he drug the cross through the city and then nailed to it? I don't think so. But because of the transformation of the Spirit, he made a choice based on what was best for you and me and ultimately for him. There is no way he could have made those choices without the power of the Spirit. There's no way. There's no way. So he makes the choice, and he is our example, and we move closer to him, and we do it for the sake of others. We are transformed by this love, by the, it, this example of suffering for us. That's why we have crosses, to remind us of how we are to give our lives for others. I guess I'm really dating myself now, but how many of you remember the movie Who's Coming to Dinner? You don't have to hold your hand up, that's all right. It was a movie starring two of my favorite actors, Katherine Hepburn and Sidney Poitier. I like Spencer Tracy, but he's not one of my favorite actors. But it was a story, in case you don't know the story, of a white family and a black family and the daughter of the white family and the son of the black family end up coming to dinner 
as fiancés. This is in the 1960s. This is not today. And that was an absolute no-no. So the daughter calls and says, you know, guess who I'm bringing to dinner? I'm bringing my fiancé. And then he walks in and he's black. And he's called his parents and they show up too. So Spencer Tracy's not real happy, to say the least. Uh, Sidney Portier's dad is not real happy, to say the least. This is not who they would have picked. Do you realize all the problems? You know, they immediately start telling them all the negatives and thinking about all the negatives and fussing at them and blah, blah, blah. The women are kind of backing off and looking at this and approaching it from a different position. And if you remember the movie, uh, Sidney Portier's mother gives this wonderful talk to Spencer Tracy. And she says, when did you old men forget how to love? She nailed it. After he listened to her, you see a little transformation going on. He realized he'd been seeing it out of his eyes rather than out of his heart and love for his daughter. So he began to see it that way, and you know, it ends happily that they go off and get married and everybody's happy. They saw it out of love. You see, real freedom is not about choosing who your daughter's going to marry. Real freedom is about being transformed and seeing everything out of love. Real freedom in the spirit produces we see things out of love. It's not about who's coming to your dinner. Who's co you get to choose who's coming to dinner. When we come to the communion table, we don't choose who comes with us. It is our family that comes with us. And folks, you don't get to pick your family. either your real family or your church family. They are yours and you're to love them. And when we come to the table together, we come out of this love and this spirit of Christ. And we gather in our freedom to be transformed into the image of this Christ that we celebrate. So I guess my wish for this July the 4th is that, that freedom truly does ring, but it's freedom in the spirit and that all the fireworks stays in the sky. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to understand your freedom. The freedom to live in a peace that is beyond our understanding but not beyond our ability to experience. A joy which stays within us even when the world around us seems to be falling apart. A goodness and a gentleness and a faithfulness that never leaves us because we have your strength and your presence that continues daily to transform us from one degree of glory to another into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to live this freedom. And may the world see it and accept it. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen.